Hey guys, Ali here. How are you doing? Welcome back to some Disco Elysium. Um, well, we're still kind of working out where what I need to do next to uh, fulfill a number of these quests that we have in our book here. Uh, the, the most prominent one is to investigate the uh, night of the murder of the guy who was found in the tree. Apparently there was some sexual assault involved and I need to find out who that was and... Uh, what happened there. Uh, I, I've got two suspects in my head. Well, two suspects. Two people I need to talk to about that, I think. One is Sylvie. The other one... is... that blonde woman um, who we saw at the very, very beginning of the game. First person that we talked to, in fact. Outside of the voices in our own head, of course. So, I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go to the car. And I'm going to uh, try and get hold of the operator person who can get me in touch with Sylvie. And we'll talk to Sylvie and see if that bears any fruit. Also, just a reminder, uh, or a warning, should I say. Um, today, my cat decided to sprawl himself across my lap whilst I'm recording today. So, And he's purring quite loud. So if you do hear it, I'm sorry. But uh, think of it as adorable rather than a nuisance and it'll all be fine. Because it is quite adorable. Anyway, let's uh, get into the car here and get onto the radio. Inside, and we'll see what's going on here. A set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Oh wait, I didn't tap on this yet? As you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's in the large orange sector, indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gauge is a red switch, labelled heat. Kind of weird that the engine's warm. I mean, the car's been sitting there for a day, I think, at least. Um, so... Um, I'm, I'm quite surprised that the engine is still warm. I think there's something wrong with your car there, Kim. I really do. But uh, let, let's not dwell on that too much. Uh, yeah, we'll just go to continue then. No, no. That's enough fun with the foldable headlights. I know they are mesmerizing. They are, they are. So fragile. I'm not going to turn it on for you again. Okay, fine. Let's pick up on the radio then. This is precinct 57. How may I assist you? Uh, please connect me to Sylvie again. Just a second, officer. Thank you very much, Alice. Coming to our rescue once again. Hmm. Sylvie Malaika on the line for you, officer. Thank you, Alice. Yes, yeah. hello? Hi, Sylvie. It's the police again. Oh, great. What else do you need, detective? Uh, let's see. Uh, do you know how my paperwork ended up in the trash container behind the whirling? Well... You tried to jam it down the toilet, sir. Clocked really? Completely. After I had unclogged the toilet and retrieved the paperwork, I threw it out in the trash, thinking you didn't need it. That explains why the paperwork had a sterile bathroom smell like that we noted when we actually found it. I am sorry about that. Anything else, detective? Have you seen my gun? Please, no. Not this again. Everyone saw your cool gun, detective. I showed you my gun? When did it happen? You were trying to impress some people with it. Everyone was eating and... She stopped hesitantly, not sure she she could continue. Actually, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Great. Anything else? Wait, what? No, hold on a second. Have you seen my policeman uniform? Uniform? I, I never saw you in any uniform. You had your things on. The disco things. Okay, that's fine, no problem. I think I got everything I need, so I don't think Selby's going to help us here. Although I'm curious. I, I don't want to... She seems so uh, troubled, shaken by the events of that night. I don't want to push her too much. You hear the cord breaking up on the other end of the radio, and then the already familiar voice. Okay. Anything else I can help you with, officer? Uh, connect me to the 41st, please, Alice. Right. Please hold. Ten four, come in. Fireworker. Over. Uh. Okay, this might sound odd, but there's personal details I'd like to discuss. Uh, okay, then first, sir. I hear you. Relay your question. Over. Okay. Wait. 
Before you say anything stupid, think it through. I need information, not fear. Be smart about this. Ask if he's there alone. Okay. Ten four, sir. I'm not hearing your question. Uh, let's see. Have I ever told you about my life before, RCM? Ten four. Well, that's. Uh... Does he actually want something, or is he hell bent on disrupting our work? I've got, I'm working too here. Come on, man. He asked if he ever told me about his days before joining the RCN. For God's sake, cut this shit out! Tell him to stop wasting time and be a goddamn policeman for a change. All right, that guy doesn't like me very much. Fair enough. I will continue on. I heard him. Was there anything else? I don't know if I want to tell them that I've lost my mind yet. So. Please refer to me with my full name in the future. Stop calling me sir and just use my real goddamn name, will you? Uh, what? What is it? What can he possibly still want from us? He seems intoxicated and keeps asking me to call him by his name. I'm not intoxicated. I have another. Uh, have I? No, it was yesterday. I think yesterday in the game we had a, a beer or something. I can't remember. Mine's drunk and emotionally aggressive. That's new. Uh -huh. Wrap it up. Don't indulge in his drunken antics. Okay, well, let's wrap this up. Why haven't they fired me? I mean, if I'm so notorious for... Roger that, 10, 10, over and out. Okay, let's close the door. If I'm such a, a nuisance to the department, such a kind of a punchline, a running joke, why haven't they fired me already? I don't understand that. They don't seem to like me very much. I don't even know what I've done here for the people here to be uh, worried about recalling the events of the night where the guy got trapped in the tree. Let alone anything else. Okay, so they're still in there. I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to see if that woman is in. Um, because I've done a lot of talking with people since the last time I checked. And um, I'm going to see if... Uh, one, if she'll answer her door. And two, if she does. Which I don't know. But she doesn't, I, I've got no idea what to do next. Oh, that's the wrong door. Oh, this is the right door. Here we go. The door is closed. Okay, let's try the handle. This door can only be opened with a key of as you hold the metal. Uh. Since the wharf left there by her hand. Wait, what? That's new. Has she come out and gone back in recently? Let's knock again. Still nothing. The lieutenant gives you a quick glance. Okay, so she's not answering at all. Um, I'll try again. Still nothing. The oh, lieutenant gives you a quick glance. All right. Okay, so I am at odds as to what I should do here. I feel like there's definitely some information that I'm missing that stops me from attacking different dialogue trees with some of the characters. So I'm going to see what I am missing here. Um... I need to make sure I have enough money by 9 p.m. tonight. Smoker on the balcony. Visit him. Oh, yeah, I'm going to talk to him at 9 p.m. as well. So I need to make sure to remember to do that. Um, all right, okay. Uh, I'm not going to buy those treasures from him. Oh. I already did this. I don't I don't quite understand. Hmm. Find some smokes and smoke them. I'm not going to do that just now. Although I could go to the shop and get them. And get that one out of the way. Uh, Joyce's info of the lynching. Joyce. Oh yeah, I guess there's quite a lot of information that we still need to talk to her about, right? Yeah, okay. I, th I, think, I think that's probably the best course of action just now. 
I've talked to him already. I've talked to her. Yeah, I'm going to get some cigarettes. I'm going to smoke them so I can get that quest out of the way. And then we're going to go talk to Joyce again on her boat. And see if there's anything that she can perhaps bring to light that either I've ignored already or, uh, you know, perhaps I was. That's going to be a tough one. But totally doable. Okay. Is that the cigarette cabinet? No, that's the cigarette cabinet, I think. A colourful display of cigarettes and alcohol. Yes. Again, I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health. Okay, I'm going to buy some cigarettes. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, let's consume some cigarettes then. Uh, oh yeah, here we go. Tool. Is there a tool? Okay, one intellect. Really? How do you get intellect from destroying your body? Fine though. I forgot how I consume these. I think it's uh is it this? There it is. Ah, here we go. Brave little army in your pocket. The first smokes platoon. <laughs> 20 brave souls standing in salute, ready to step into fire for you. Pull one out of the pack. You picked the best one. This soldier is fat and succulent. What <laughs> are you waiting for? Light up. Re-become yourself. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. Get a load of this rock and roll cop hair, people. Johnny Thundercop. <laughs> Thundercop. Fish a cheap lighter out of his pants. With a flick of the thumb, there's fire. A primal satisfaction. Ooh. Here we go. Sounds glorious. The lighter's dark green disposable plastic. Safety's off. In your case, the safety is always off. Hey, you can't smoke in here. The girl's voice betrays Please little... Please, don't fuck oh. with Frit. Oh, okay. Shut up. It's already happening. Dip that bad boy in the flame and breathe in. What are the repercussions if I do this? Repercussions? There's a high risk of glory with a mild chance cool genius. Nice. Smoking makes you into an intellectual. Okay Everyone then. Knows that. All right. It will help you concentrate a bit. Do it. Thick, warm smoke gets sucked down into your lungs. Immediately, you feel a warm nostalgia fill your head, body, and so all right oh crap so he wasn't finished talking my bad because the experience thing came up i thought he was not to worry so i've done that quest yay do i have another skill point to use i'm not sure if i have another skill point to use yeah so that one's done now and i'm gonna go talk to joyce uh in a second skill points do i have any no i'm close though very close I got a thought here. There's T's. How idiomatic. T's? I don't know what you mean by that. Okay. I'm going to make my way to the boat to talk to Joyce. I think that's the best idea here. Okay. Here we are. Joyce, I hope you have some new information for me, or some information. You're back. Ah. What can I help you with? I spoke with the lorryman at the roundabout. Word has travelled, yes, but nothing of real substance has surfaced yet, I gather. Wild Pines has eyes on the intersection, but not ears. Okay. One of the tall buildings overlooking the roundabout. It would give them a read on the entire quarter. One of the tall buildings overlooking the roundabout. All right. Because we are being monitored every step we take, colleague. Damn. Do we have any other business here? Yeah, I have some more questions about reality. Lessons in basic reality. 
my favorite part of the day. Okay, I want Go to know. Ahead. I want to know. Anything. Let's see here. What is this? A bird. A spenicid. A flightless bird of the polar regions. Uh, am I really that awkward? <laughs> of course you're not, my dear. I'm just terrible at guessing games. I mean, what is this place here? Ah. This is the pier of Rue de Saint-Gislaine. Oh, is that how you say that? A, where the tenants have been kind enough to rent me a slot. Oh, that's nice. Or two. Two? You, you have one boat. Two seems a bit wasteful. What is the Rue de saint Gislaine? Which I know you just said correctly, but I've forgotten what you said already. A pre-revolutionary tenement. All right. All buildings are called tenements, you see. And new buildings, bâtiments. After les bâtiments nouveaux. But 33A and 33B are not nouveau. They're old. Oh. She looks up at the crumbling façade. This one used to be eight to ten stories tall. A real high-rise by the standards of the last century. Built to mirror the skyscrapers across the bay in the Delta. That was before the war, of course. Who lived in them? Mostly the urban middle class, I believe. This was once primo real estate. Before the cannons locked four or five stories off. Hmm. Splat, splat. From a dilapidated balcony, Cindy the Skull gives Joyce the evil eye, her red paintbrush held at, to her throat. You could be wrong. Oh. But from here, it appears as if she's running the brush across her throat in a soaring motion. I think we'll have to talk to Cindy again. Wonderful. All right. Ooh, conceptualization. Okay, I want to know what you are. Hmm. She hums. She won't maneuver her way out of this one. What are you? I am the vilest of the vile. Whoa. A traitor. A devourer of nations and infants. All right, this took a turn. I am an ultra. Ultra what? Ultra light? Ultra thin? What? She raises the corner of her mouth, smirking, revealing a canine. Hmm. Dos mio! A liberal! <laughs> oh, Dios mio. I think that's what that says. Wait, what's an ultra? An ultra liberal. Uh... It's a type of liberal from the revolution. It's uh, not the moderate kind. I'm a uh, liberal. Oh, wait, I, I liberate myself pretty. Wait, I, I liberate pretty hard myself. No, not like me. <laughs> I am the nether creature of the Forbidden Swamp who pushed the king under a ship wagon and betrayed the revolution. You don't seem old enough to be able to have done that. Although, yeah, okay, she does, okay. I did say she looked like Margaret Thatcher earlier on, but at one point Margaret Thatcher was also young. Are you liberated enough to offer up your home on a plate for financial colonists? No, I think not. Tell me. What home? I've uncoiled myself. Do you find me frightening? Well, I think it's frightening that you think I have a home. Because <laughs> I haven't found it yet. I'd love to know how you know about it. In her green eyes, you see a mixture of truth and self-satire. Decades of guilt and pride. I forgive you, but only because you're charming. A devil, who being of great charm and guile, sneaketh into the homes of the godly. Beneath her waterproof raincoat and silk shirt, is a body imbibed in numb twelve perfume. You are suddenly and intimately aware of it. <laughs> uh, sure, why not? Let's ask her. Steal, kill, and destroy. That they say we've been doing for over four decades now. Perhaps regrettably. I've had my fill for this century. Oh. Hmm. The lieutenant hums, reading his notes. In any case, I'm glad we can remain collegial despite my scaly bulk and my perverse need to infiltrate and betray both kingdom and revolution. It's okay, Joyce. I understand. Everybody has their place, right? When the dust settled, the liberals were the only ones left to clean up the mess by virtue of their survival 
they were handed enormous power to shape the future. This was all our last generation managed. Would you have done something differently? With due respect to our overlords, the eternal caretaker government that keeps Martinez a monument to the efficacy of its artillery. Okay. I would not have relinquished sovereignty to the coalition. Not here in Martinez, and not in the Stella Maris or Delta Beachheads either. If not for my own sake. All right. She realizes her small, cold fists are clenched. She loosens them. She's just as angry as many people. Then for my daughters, we had an obligation to defend our sovereignty. We should have burned the whole Isola down rather than let them have it. You're a smart woman. Perhaps. My intellectual vanity will be my undoing. You're no dummy yourself. Is it not everybody's? No, or intellectual vanity will be any will be my undoing. So am I. A smart <laughs> boy getting smarter. Yep. On basic term of reality at a time. You're a patriot? Yes. I suppose I am. But I wouldn't be a patriot anywhere but here. Fair enough. Seditious talk, man. The lieutenant puts down his notes and gives her a look. You have daughters? Yes. Whatever else I am. I'm also a mother. And a wife. Oh. Now, shall we return to reality? Okay. So, uh, let's see. Uh, conceptualization. We have quite a high rating there, so I'm going to click on that. What is all of this? The scent. The sound. The air. What world is this? What world? Yeah. The only one, I suppose. The world of matter. And its pale antipode. The camera of her mind glides over the surface of the water. What do you see? Great bodies of water. Forest-covered surfaces. Clusters of light where the cities lie. You've seen the montage. We all have. This world is enough. She concludes. There is a term of Indian they coined for it in the DeLorean century, when humanity was high on this world, discovering more and more of it, these archipelagos included. What is it? Elysium. Oh. Well, what do you know? Eh. Uh... Elysium, the world needs a term of endearment, or this world does not deserve a term of endearment. <laughs> Yeah, the world needs it, yeah. It does. There are those who would call it hell. What is hell? A term of hatred that originates, like many such things, with the Mesk Petro fascists. Uh, I don't feel like I got the whole picture yet. Oh, you want a picture of the world? There is no complete set yet, dear. They're having some trouble reaching orbit. How come? Great things are difficult to achieve. Yeah. For now, we're viewing the world from the inside, sideways. Inside, sideways? What shape is this world then? We used to think it was a sphere. Oh. But that is beginning to look less and less likely by the day. Yeah, that sounds ridiculous. Know it from the tabloids, but the ORG nations have been launching weather balloons into the lower ionosphere since the 30s. No way. ORG, Occident Rivershaw Grad. There's a steadily increasing trickle of images. Between the big three scientific contributors, they're piecing together a dark grey corona. A dark grey corona? Yes. Pale covers 72% of the surface. There are grey flares and prominences, even arcs above entire isolas. The images are blurry, but if there was a sphere in there, it certainly looks like it fractured a long time ago. Okay. A cold fear seeps into you. Oh my god, wait. What the hell are you telling me? You seem to be spooked. Please don't be. Her voice becomes homely. Calm. She lets a moment pass. The pale? And what do you mean, Corona? They say there is a rarefied envelope of matter surrounding the darkened disk of our planet. That is... 
if we are still living on a planet. Or, to speak more plainly, imagine vast swathes of land disrupted by nothingness. I always thought that word was swaths of land. Maybe I'm dumb. I am sorry, dear. It must sound quite terrifying through the acute encephalopathy. Even scientific positivism isn't entirely convinced about what we're dealing with here. All right. But this is one of the greatest questions of our time. Maybe when they get the complete set together, it will jolt us out of our rut, bring us together, however naive it may sound. There's nothing naive about hope, ever. A fractured corona doesn't feel like it's going to bring anyone together. You have misimagined it. Oh. I don't have the power to convey to you the effect and geometry of the images that depict our world from below low orbit. It's... it's like the crowning of the world. It's insane. Very disco. You'd love it. Hmm. Sounds like it. Well, if you say disco, wait, it doesn't sound like any kind of disco I'd like to go to. I don't care about disco, I only care about the commune. Hmm. Well, if you say it's disco. See, everyone finds something worth holding on to in this world. Yeah. However wasted its opportunities. Indeed. Suddenly, you're conscious of yourself standing there, on whatever this all is. Your arms hang down by your sides. The lieutenant observes you both silently. He adjusts his glasses. Hmm. You said pale. What is pale? The pale is not, technically speaking, part of reality. So you made it up? Yes. Also, I think we've had enough excitement for today. No. Remember, we have a cadaver to attend to. I know, but come on, I'm learning. I'm learning here, Kim. Let me learn. Of course, Lieutenant. Let's try something else. I don't want to. I want to know what the pale is. I don't think your colleague would appreciate that. Okay. He has already been so patient with this whole exercise. Okay, then. Let's continue with something else, all right? You can ask about anything else in the world. Anything. Okay. You could sneak back later when the lieutenant is not here. Oh, yeah, we could. To step aside. Oh, yeah, because he goes to bed at like 2 a.m. We could stay up. Why not? Okay, so let's say uh, so obviously Cindy made a remark earlier and a gesture with her paintbrush, so we're gonna ask her what that's all about. The girl in the old lady rags. Yeah. Looks like a sullen and rebellious member of a teen infraculture. Oh, it's easy to judge the youth like that when you can just put them in a convenient little box. Infraculture? Yes. You and I belong to the supraculture. Oh great. The common, the herd. The music on the radio, the food in the chain restaurant, those are all too popular for the girl in the old lady rags. Oh, so you're calling her a hipster, okay. Oh, not a hipster. Is it a hipster? Yeah, I don't know. She prefers a fantasy world, hmm. an infraculture with its own dress code and vernacular. Yeah, hipster. It is an illusion, I'm afraid. Definitely. There is no refuge from the supraculture. That seems very arrogant. A thing to say. Uh, okay, I understand it. I don't need it to be explained to me like a child. I understand everything. Make it more complicated somehow. I can't. Yeah. That's how simple it is. Yep. One may dye their hair green and wear their grandma's coat all they want. Cattle has the ability to subsume all critiques into itself. Even those who would critique capital end up reinforcing it instead. Isn't that just the truth? God damn. All right. What next? Yeah, what next? Suddenly, you're not so sure you're part of the super culture. I, I, on a personal level, I don't think I am, but I think I may be part and of the infraculture. What would that be? Hmm. Disco. <laughs> I can see that, yes. I dabble in those dark arts myself. Not so long ago. I assure you, it was a thoroughly supracultural phenomenon. Not always. Downright mandatory. Not always. Nothing infra about disco, baby. Your disco? Those days are long behind me. 
And even in the early 30s, I would say I was more of a new girl. Disco was a minor, but still enjoyable facet of the whole thing for me. The new? The new. A cultural era. And the name of the decade it ravished, the 30s. It came out of post-revolutionary revachol. It was ultra-liberal. It involved lots of partying, as you might imagine, and champagne-coloured everything. By the looks of it, that would have been when you came of age. Now. She raises an eyebrow at you. Sounds fun, I can't remember a single thing. Wasn't it Guillaume Le Million who said, If you can remember the new, you weren't there. I repeat, cannot remember a single thing. She asks me to recall something. Okay. For some reason, your mind is a veritable repository of Guillaume Le Million lyrics, trivia, and b-sides. But the time to explore this is when you're alone, facing a mirror, perhaps. Right now, it will derail the reality lowdown. A mirror. Oh, we have a mirror in our bedroom, remember? Or in our apartment room, whatever, hotel room. That's it for now. I don't want to inconvenience Kim any more than I already have. have, to have been of assistance. Ah. <sighs> that I know. Thank you. Else? Thank you. That's all for now. Okay, let's go talk to Cindy. Um, she seems to have issues. Well, I can't get in here anymore. I'm just going to have to shout from here. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Well, maybe not. Do you know anything about the recent murder? I ain't no snitch, pigstein. Go forth and forage in someone else's shit. No shortage of squealers in these parts. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. We weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. Okay, so she's clearly not needing to be talked to right now. I'm honestly at odds. Uh, I really don't know what where to go next. Uh, I, I thought that maybe phoning uh, Sylvie would help. Um, you know, I might phone her again and push her this time. Uh, I think I've been too nice. <laughs> Let's see here. Volition. Keep your morale up. Yeah, morale's important. I'll do that. Okay. We got a new task. Um, f yeah, talk to Joyce about the pill without Kim. Yeah, so at some point we're going to do that. I'm not quite sure when. I'm, I'm really wanting to kind of zero in on this body thing. Or at least get myself into the harbour so I can speak to that Ervoret guy. I keep hitting walls. And they're not the kind that I'm able to break down very easily, apparently. But one of my quests says I need to go talk to Kuno about uh, the, the, the guy hanging in the tree. But I did that already, and I don't like talking to Kuno because he's an ass. He's a complete ass. But, yeah, Sylvie. I'm going to push Sylvie first before we, you know, have to resort to talking to the vegetables of the society. Come on. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Okay, let's see here. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Uh, please connect me to Sylvie again. Just a second, officer. Okay. Sylvie Malaika on the line for you, officer. Malaika. Yes, hello? Hey, Sylvie, it's the police again. Oh, great. What else do you need, detective? Have you seen my gun? Please, no. Not this again. Everyone yeah. saw your cool gun, detective. Okay, I showed you my gun. What did it... When did it happen? You were trying to impress some people with it. Everyone was eating and... And what? What did I do? You were waving it around in everyone's face, begging them to describe it. You said it calms you, and then you started making suicide jokes. Whoa. It got pretty graphic. Okay. 
Those again. I have been trying to wean you off them. Off of what? You know, when you put your gun, your actual gun, on your temple and pretend to shoot your brains out, off of that, people don't like that. Oh, apparently I seem to think it's funny. Mm, I remember this. You were screaming things like, My brains are all over the wall, painting them red. I won't be seeing it, because these are my brains. I can't see without my brains. Very nice visuals there. Hmm. Let's see here. Uh, why would I threaten to kill myself? I mean, look at the world. I'd love to stay. Okay, I don't know what to say. Yes, but what happened to my gun? <laughs> I don't know what to say. Why would I threaten to kill myself? Okay, what happened to my gun? No idea. All I know is Metsu waving around money instead. Saying oh. things like big bucks cannot lie and guns can't buy money, but money can always buy guns. Wow. It almost looked like you pawned it. But believe me, I did not ask. Alright. Who got my gun then? I think that's all I need, thank you. You hear the call breaking up on the other end of anything else I can help you with, Officer? Mmm no, I'm done. Fifty seven, over and out. Thank you. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook. Up. Okay, we'll close the door. Alright, let's think about this here. I'm gonna try and talk to Kuno again. I feel like I'm going round in circles. Or I've missed something stupidly important, but really obvious, but I've missed it somehow. Let's see what Kuno has to say, if anything. Alright, figure out what's going on with this kid. Let, let's try and exercise the limited amount of empathy that we have. What's going on? Ah. He's an ungovernable youth on your crime scene, thrown around incendiary language, trying to push your buttons. Like you don't have enough on your plate. You feel a sudden surge of self-pity coming on. Oh, okay. Let's see. I'm not going to go with number four. It's going to be either the boundary pushing or trying to get him to help with the murder. Let's see here. You know, you must have seen all kinds of things throwing stones here. Want to help the RCM bust a murder? Fuck no. <laughs> what are you? Fucking mentally handicapped. God damn. This kid. Kuno, they've almost made you a snitch now. He's off, see. Kuno always takes the bullet over the hammer. He nods, big boy style, incredibly proud of, him, proud of himself. He'd rather die than work with the justice system. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that didn't work out quite so well. Hmm. I have more questions about the crime scene. Yes. The kingdom of Kuno. The fuck do you want with it? No, I don't have any more questions because you've already answered all those. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Let's talk about the body. The fuck about ah, it. some new options here. Where's the rest of his armor? Kuno doesn't give a shit about the armor. How come? Kuno's fucking got one big thing wrong with him. He's a fucking mutant. A mutant. Look at him, fucking growth hormone shit. He's a giant. Oh. Huh. Armor's too big for any man. Except from maybe uh, Meterhead, or whatever his name is. Kuno doesn't give a shit about that freak armor. Kuno threw that shit away. You, what? Oh, come on. He's just pretending that he doesn't care because he's too small for the armor. What do you mean, threw it away? Kuno tried to get the helmet on, it was too big. He performed a kickoff from the imaginary helmet. Kuno kicked that shit in the sea, rugby style. What? That shit means nothing to Kuno. Wait, you threw it in the sea? Yeah, that shit means nothing to Kuno. Kuno doesn't give a shit about material shit. Kuno's a fucking monk. <laughs> Brilliant. You wanna fuck on someone about that armor? Go fuck the mustached union fuck. 
the jolly troubadour shit at the gate? Oh, wait, that's um, the guy who immediately knew that the past that we had wasn't ours. What do you mean by troubadour? Yeah, cock in boot. You know that <laughs> jolly union cat fucker came around talking about cows or some shit? What? Came around pretending like he cares about cows? Okay. Yes, you met him at the gates. Manana, the yeah. with the boots and the jolly smile. You mean that guy? Yeah, he's the one you want to talk to. He's fucking crazy about that armor shit. Coming here pretending like he likes cows. Trying to catch a peeper, Kuno's armor. All right. Curious, my liege. Why did Kuno feed you this information? Let it be. I don't want to tip him off here. Yes. Pray pardon, sire. Better to let it be. I did not mean to make you paranoid. There we go. There are contusions all over this body. Did you do that? Fuck are you talking about? What is this contusion shit? He grabs his head like it's suddenly hurting. He says you're stupid, Kuno. They want to make you stupid again. Let's see. A contusion is a bruise. I'm talking about the marks you left... Sorry, uh, your stone's left on the corpse. Oh, did Kuno make your shit sniffing harder? Obstruction of shit sniffing? This is Kuno's kingdom. Kuno fucking rules here. Hmm. You hear the lieutenant hum. More on this later. You're testing Kuno's patience here. Get lost, f It's okay. Kuno doesn't fucking care. You've given me what I need. Let's go and talk to Manana. And uh, see if he has anything to to add to this. Might finally be getting a little bit of progress here. Quarter to two in the afternoon. Got to keep an eye on the clock. So I definitely want to catch that smoker guy at his apartment at nine o'clock-ish. I also need to get more money. Hmm, I need to exploit some hooligans. There he is. Okay, let's talk to Manana here. How can I help you? Kuno told me you were supposed to know about the armor. <laughs> the little boy had the good on his promise. His promise? To get me into trouble. To sick the pigs on me. Pardon the choice of words. Not mine. Okay. What happened? I was asked to look into that armor situation. Official union probe, you know. Track it down, see who took it. Oh, it's how to lose you. Yeah. At first I thought, why not? Maybe the pieces can feed the strike. Buy us a few more days under the sun, you know? Yeah, maybe. So I went to this boy. He said he'll make me his prison bitch. <laughs> he's got eyes everywhere and the cops in his pocket and he's the king of Jamrock. Okay. Serves me right for doing menial footwork. I dropped that probe right then and there, and it still got me into trouble. One bad move is all it takes. Let's see. So Kuno used us to what? Scare you? It's a minor nuisance. It's all good. He contemplates taking a swig from his flask. He thinks. Not yet. Better to get this business out of the way. Sweeter then. Okay. So the probe into the armor what did you learn i learned that people don't want to talk to a drunk union man about some armor yeah weird what else <laughs> not much technical stuff mostly that was the interesting part Ooh, what sort of technical stuff i did some research into this armadura let's say i have friends at the library i didn't get into the material science just how it comes off okay how does it come off in parts four in total the helmet was the first to go. The kid says he tore it off and kicked it into the sea. I believe him. The boots were still on the guy last I saw. Too hard to remove. Yeah, don't we know it. So, as I count, there are two parts missing. The gauntlets and the cuirass. This is where I left off. Too much hassle. More like a job for some militia. Hold on, four pieces? Helmet, cuirass, gauntlet, boots. What about leggings? I'm going to find one piece of it. One is enough. I'm ambitious. I'm going to find all of it. 
all the pieces. Actually, I may have better things to do. We'll try and find all of it. All of it? There are junior officers out there. They okay. Prove themselves. I would leave some for them, but okay. Let's find all of it. All right. It's implied. He finds it unlikely that you will succeed in this. Okay, fair enough. A Mesquite epic game all across Martinez. I hope it will be a real bonanza for you. Yeah, me too. Thank you for your cooperation, sir. No problem. If you see that kid, thank him from Call Me Manana. Thank him for showing me the way. Good talking to you, go run. Okay, so what do we get there? Where's the rest of the armor? Kuno lied to you, return and confront him. Okay, we will. You want all the armor pieces. Deck yourself out in a full metal baton battle hardened glory. Note. This might take a while. A long while. Okay. Okay. Let's go and talk to Kuno again then. But does Kuno care? He doesn't care. I, I talked to Manana about the armor. So? Hmm. He told me you promised to sick the pigs on him. Okay. He said to thank you. Wasn't too keen on chasing down the armor anyway. Uh, fuck. Okay. Kuno's a giver like that, yes? He looks slightly confused. Kuno sent your fat ass running around like jello. Alright. Look, pig. Kuno sent you to rough some people up. Kuno played you. That happened. Now you and Kuno should move on. I will remember this, Kuno, you little... Uh, okay, let's be nice. Little boy. You got fucked. You got fucked, pig. Fucked bad. Of course you're going to remember this. Now get the fuck out of here, <clears throat> Grief and the Kuno. After this shit, you better have something real interesting to say if you want to stay in Kuno's face. God, this guy. Yeah, real interesting. Shut up, sidekick. Nobody likes sidekicks. Kuno doesn't fucking care. All right. Let's see if she's got anything new to say. Alright, let's go. Let's see what happened with our journal updates there, because I saw a couple. So he said that he kicked it out into the sea, right? The closest... Like, way to the sea is... What? The, like, the heart? Like, the, the dock? That's, I mean, where Joyce's boat is, right? I guess I could have a look around there. Oh no, wait, I'm going the wrong way, sorry. This way. I want to go this way. I don't know where he kicked it out into the sea, though. That, that's the tricky part. These guys are still playing with their balls. Um, I'm trying to think of where he would have done it. Oh, that guy's no longer there. Maybe he fell into the sea. Maybe. There's some fish there, or a fish there. Nothing to interact with here at all. I wonder if knowing that it's in the sea, we'll be able to get any sort of view through here. This coin operated viewer is facing southwest. Look inside. A layer of graffito covers the lenses. Oh. You spell out the word Onuk written on the other side with N and C scribbled backwards. Kuno. That's Kuno on the lens. Under the graffito, a sea of blues and greys appear. Behind the water lies a coast studded with concrete and reeds. Hmm. On it, a church on stilts. Lanky weather-worn wooden planks. An X-shaped cross topping its tower. You know this to be the star of Perikonassis, 
or the Cairo, the central symbol of the Perkinesian church, a star, a great moral height to be strived towards. Around the large wooden building, you see chunks of sea ice. Okay. The beach, and a small tent set up on the ice. Wow, that kind of looks cool. Sounds cool, sorry. Having a tent on the ice. Um. I wonder if these guys have seen anything. Vigilance officer, what can this old carabineer do for you? Eh, uh, nothing. And what about this guy? Anything new from him? Nah, that's fine. I know the rules of the game already. Man, this is tricky. I'm gonna go talk to Titus again, maybe. See if anything's developed from his side. Titus, I want to speak to you, old boy. Looks like the circus left him, but the clowns are still here. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, I know. I'm not going to establish authority here. Um, I want to talk about the hanging. Just get. <laughs> Good one, Titus. Uh, no, no more questions. Fucking... Okay, and I don't think she has anything new to say either. I wonder if uh, anybody else can get me a. I've got nothing to hmm. say to you. Why are you wasting your time? I'm gonna talk to Gart again. And see if, uh... And uh, no... I, I saw another thing at the Whirling. Another thing. Great. I love ah, those. We can inquire about the phone line for, uh, uh... Is it Lena? Yeah, Lena is this woman, right? So the phone line is dead? Yes. And the phone company is taking its sweet time sending someone to fix it. Hmm. Is it true or that there was foul play? Told you that. Uh, I would never disclose my sources. That would be dishonorable. Fine, yeah. It looked like someone had messed with the wiring. It was shortly after the hanging. But yeah. I don't know if it's at all related. Plenty of assholes around here who aren't murderers. Okay. If you do find out who cut the line, though, let me know so I can forward them the repair bill. Okay. Cool. Yes. Goodbye. Lena doesn't have anything new to say, I don't think. Oh, hello, dear. There you are again. And uh, no, it's okay. Right, let's go and do the mirror thing. I think we'll do the mirror thing. <laughs> there has to be some way I can progress here. Okay. I'm gonna go into my room. I thought for a second that I couldn't. Oh, I have a thought. He also tries not to look at the pile of tape viscera on the carpet, or the weird suitcase on the hat rack, or the potted plant dying in the corner. But it's all just too morbid to ignore. Okay. The man is finding it hard not to trip on the tape and not to send any of the bottles rolling across the floor, where unidentifiable sludge makes it hard for him to breathe. Smells of vomit in here. Let's see. I did it my way. That's funny. Um, this is where the magic happens. And by that, you mean crimes against humanity? Well, crimes against myself, anyway. I have no idea what that means. Uh, you don't want to know. Okay, okay. I'm going to turn the fan back on.
The fan stands still. Fill the, the fan. switch must be broken oh. because nothing happens. The air in the room is starting to feel like vaporized urine. What does vaporized urine feel like? The bed is still cold from the broken window and not too inviting, but it's yours. No He's time to rest yet. Okay, I'm going to look in the mirror. There was something I needed to do with a mirror, so I'm going to check that out. Get in my bathroom, man. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. Dig deep into your mind to locate the source of the expression. It belongs yes! in the new, the third decade of the current century. Enough time had passed from the failure of the revolution that, for a fleeting moment, free market economy seemed like the ultimate, uncontested way of life for our species. Okay. Things were good. It was smooth sailing. People made gold and champagne-tinted interiors and facades to suit the times, calling this the new style. But more importantly, disco happened. We all like disco. For Revachol. Your city. That meant only one thing. Guillaume La Million. Okay. Out of the dazzling swirl of disco music, in an open air, what de Nuit, somewhere in Revachol West, Guillaume's blonde mane appeared on the screen. He sang some bullshit. Then he made the expression. Okay. How long ago was the new? There is a vast ocean of time between right now and the expression. Looking good on you, or anyone. Two decades, if the calendar is to be trusted. Humanity has run aground in that time. It's a different world now. The expression is a relic. All right, anything else? Like, who am I? Why did I become a cop? Why did I drink myself into oblivion? You have some understanding of the near history of Disco, plus the trivia you've picked up along the way. Episodic memory, however, remains in the dark. Yep. It may never return. You should prepare yourself for that. Okay, so I adopted this expression. Why? Everyone loved it. Maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you. Maybe it did. Either way, it's all gone now. Only the grimace remains. I feel the need to add a clicking sound when I make it. The click is used to spur on a horse. It also features heavily in Guillaume Le Million's regional mega-hit, Don't Worry, Your Pretty Little Head. Okay. Sometimes you like to add finger pistols to the mix, because... Unlike Guillaume Le Million, you are a police officer. It's your nifty little way to say, I'm armed and dangerous. And I'm the modern day Sherlock Holmes. I guess that's it then. It doesn't have to be. You can swoon over Guillaume and his champagne cork smile oh. whenever you want to. Maybe some of the stardust will return. Well, let's see if I can get this. It's too oh. late. Like an image on film. The expression belongs to your primary motor cortex. It would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. Okay. I would like to do that, but I think I should equip my, my cutters first. It's probably a good idea. I'm going to see if equipping my cutters does uh, helps me at all here. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. Oh, maybe. Wait, your face adorned with the expression. Okay, use your chain cutters to fix the faucet. Stop the steam from fogging up the mirror. The chain cutters oh. out of your hands as you attempt to twist the faucet into place. Well, you know one thing for <laughs> sure. You've probably never been a plumber. Okay, I'll have to come back and try and fix that some other time. Okay, we haven't found out very much in this episode, but what we have has been reasonably full and rich. There has been a bit of progress, but I, I am I am at complete odds with myself as to where to go next to further this investigation. So I'm going to end this episode here.
And I'm going to have a little think about that, and then I'll come back with the next episode for you guys, and hopefully we'll progress a little bit further. Thank you very much for watching. If, of course, you liked the video, uh, you can obviously feel free to hit that button. If you want to stick around for more in the future, whether it be of this game or any other game that I cover, uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And, of course, if you have any thoughts and feelings that you feel the need to express about this game or anything else, make sure to... Um, uh, you know, use the comments section down below. For now though, take care, and I will see you in the next video.